All right, dudes. So yeah, over the last couple of weeks, I've been like uh, making a little series on Facebook and that. Yeah, telling you all about like the the new songs off the uh, new Dynamite Dinosaurs album, the greatest. Yeah, so this is a little collection of all the videos I did, sort of telling you about all the songs on the album, where they came from. Yeah, they were sort of a, a collection of songs, some new, one cover, and they're all songs that I've written over the years in my band. So here we are. This is a compilation of all those little videos. Check them out and learn about the new album and listen to The Greatest right now. Stay rad. All right, dudes. So yeah, the Dynamite and Dinosaurs album is finally out. The Greatest. Yeah, so I thought I'd do a lot of little series uh, sort of telling you what each song on the album's about. Yeah, so like, as you know, well, as you might not know, uh, the album is mainly songs I've written over the years. We kind of, I was writing an album and uh, I wrote like, well, one of the songs off the album and then I just kind of lost my uh, writing mojo for a bit. It wasn't really coming up with anything. So I might come up with the idea, why don't we just pick two sort of like obscure songs from uh, the spot back catalog and then we all picked like two songs and uh, went from there so yeah the first song off the album and the title track is called the greatest yeah and that's the song i've written about 2002 2003 when ollie mills was playing drums for us it was sort of done on an ep that we recorded at pub studios it was cool but that song was all about it sounds like egotistical like going on about how i'm the greatest but it's kind of like it's just about the sort of act you can put on when you're in a rock band. I know I'm not the greatest, really. I'm just like a... But in reality, I'm just sort of a bumbling, awkward fool, really. But it's nice to sort of portray that image and just sort of live that kind of... Act that dream. So that's what that song's all about, really. Just about, you know, pretending to be that big rock star when you know you're not. But it's always fun to, to live that dream. That's what I like being in a band, really, because I can be be something I'm not, like a sort of like confident like rock star dude when really I'm just a kind of stupid idiot really, but never mind. But that's what that song's about. That's why it's got all the like lyrics in it, like yeah. But it's just all about partly really, but yeah, it's a fun song. That's the greatest first song on the album. 2002, 2003, early spot song. Hope you like it. Stay rad. All right, dudes. So yeah, good news. Dynamite and Dinosaur's new album, The Greatest, is finally up on Spotify, as well as all the other uh, online streaming and downloading shops and services. Turns out to be a bit of a staggered release, but never mind. So yeah, on with my series of uh, yeah, telling you a little about all the songs that are on the uh, on the new album. Turn the old aircon down a bit. Yeah. So we're on uh, track two now, which is uh, yeah, smash up the band which is quite ironic, they're in the band today, yeah, on the TV rounds, fixing all the TVs, yeah, but uh, I'm not going to smash this van up, because, uh, yeah, I went my boss to go uh, pretty mental if I did that, but, but yeah, I'll just drive it, drive the van. Smash up the van, I wrote that in about, like, 2007 for an album we did in spot called Today's Hate the World Day, which was named after one of my favourite Wild Heart songs, which was, like, uh, yeah, come out in the 90s, I think it was a B-side or something. Yeah, it was, uh, I wrote that album like when I was uh, unemployed, I lost my job, so I was a bit like, annoyed with things. And that was kind of like what Smash Up The Van was about. It was just about, you know, people around, getting on your nerves everywhere, just like idiots all over the place. And uh, yeah, I can't really condone uh, hitting people. So I thought like, yeah, good way to like, take your frustrations out, be like, smash up a van. Uh, it's better than, I thought it'd be better than like, you know, smashing someone's face, because, uh, yeah, it's just a bit mean, they can't really do that, uh, things like that. So I thought, yeah, smash up the van, good way to take out your aggression. So yeah, that's basically where that song came from. So that was uh, pretty enjoyable. It really, doesn't really get much deeper than that. It's just an angry song about moaning about things that get on your nerves. A bit like the customers I had today in Yarmouth. Some real bell ends, I tell you. Like, it's unbelievable some of the crap I have to deal with. Yeah, it was... Uh, it was all good fun, really, but uh, I don't think I would actually encourage anyone to smash a real van. But sometimes people can be really annoying, and uh, yeah, well, that's pretty much all the inspiration that there is for that song. Smashing things up, but never mind, it's all good. Uh, I'm nearly finished now, so yeah, I'll be back home, crack a can of lager, and uh, sit there. Anyway, 
check out the album, second track, smash up the van. Hope you enjoy it. Stay rad. Alright dudes, it's uh, Wednesday now and here I am, like well, yeah, just finished work and uh, having a shave. Yeah, telling you about the uh, third track off the new Dynamite and Dinosaurs album, The Greatest, which is out now, yes, on all the uh, online stores and you can get a physical CD if you're old and you want to get one, you've just got to like ask the band and uh, yeah, we'll sort it out. Anyway, on the track three of the album, which is uh, Third Time to Charm. Yeah, so this is actually the only, uh, yeah, completely new track on the album. It was the first one done for the album. It was uh, written about a year ago uh, when I thought, like, yeah, I thought that I'd do an album. I thought it was all intended to be sort of crazy rock and roll. It was going to be all like full guitars, like ACDC sort of airborne, or airborne art kind. Basically, ACDC. And uh, yeah, so it started off and I was like looking for like big guitar solos and screaming and vocals. And it was called uh, Third Times of Char because, well, it was going to be. It was originally intended to be the title track of the third album, that was what the album was going to be called originally. Uh, yeah, so that song was all about just like never giving up really. And even though like you get old or whatever, everyone thinks you should like, I don't know, just settle into some sort of boring normal life. And uh, yeah, I don't really want to do that. But you should always follow your dreams, you want to always rock and roll. Yeah, rock and roll don't really matter. How old you are, it's only a number, isn't it? I'm still the same idiot I was when I was 18. A little bit more re me, but other than that, it's pretty much identical. Uh, but yeah, so that's all that's about, really. Just sort of uh, never giving in, carry on rocking, no matter like, what gets in your way. And uh, yeah, everything will be all right in the end. And it sort of some of defiance really, but uh, it's saying third time to charm was like, yeah, this is the third album, it's gonna be the like the biggest one. Not be, but that don't really matter. Because even after the third album doesn't do very well, just like all the others, doesn't really matter. I'll still carry on. I'll never give up. Don't really expect to get anywhere or make anything make any money or fame or whatever. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Like they say, it's a taking part they can. In my case, it's just a fucking hour and that little tiny bit of hope that one day, one track will take off. I'm sure it never will. But, you know, you gotta stay smooth, ain't you? Just like my face. Anyway, Track three, third time's the charm. Check it out on the new album by Dynamite Dinosaurs, the greatest out now. Stay rad. Hello, and welcome to number four in my series of uh, yeah, telling you about all the songs on the on the new Dynamite and Dinosaurs album, the greatest available now. Yeah, um, I've already talked about the first three songs. They're on my profile if you want to go back and watch them. I don't know why you would, but they're free, so. You've got nothing to lose. Anyway, on to today's track, which is track four. Yeah, this one is called Life Goes On. Yeah, it was written, uh, I think, in about 2007, 8-ish time. It was actually written for a film, yeah. We got contacted uh, by somebody who was like involved with doing the music for like a new Highlander film. It came out, it was called Highlander 5, The Source. Yeah, it was a dreadful film. But anyway, that was a funny time because we sort of like had this big, well, I don't know, big, this music guy and uh, he sort of like invited us down to his house for like a meeting. There was like me, Big Mike at the time, Ollie Mills and Chris, yeah. And uh, so we all went down there like trying to make out we were like proper musicians. And that was hard. And uh, yeah, we sort of like talked to him, sound all knowledgeable, like, yeah, I can write these songs at the like, no hassle. And it's like <laughs> playing us all this like, classical music and stuff that was going to be on the film and we like sort of like trying to look like we knew what was going on it's like oh, you know, like the bassoon bit yeah that was good <laughs> whatever but yeah eventually yeah but we went all right we sort of bluffed the way through it until we left when everything collapsed we sort of on the way leaving we thought yeah we got like that we looked quite professional that and i sort of did an awkward handshake and then mike comes out trips over like this guy's path and just like falls on his fence 
tries to grab the gate bit to like stop himself from crashing down and rips the gate off. So yeah, and the fence was all hanging down. Oh, but he really hurt his knee actually, which was obviously not funny, but God, we were in hysterics all the way home. But yeah, Highlander, not, I wouldn't recommend you and watch it. It's not very good. But anyway, that's what that song was written for. And it was sort of written, you know, because the Highlander, he never dies. So that song's just about like, what it'd be like to be immortal. You know, I'm not quite immortal. I'm gonna live to 126, but that's not immortal. I will die one day, eventually. Yeah. So this song is what it'd be like to live forever and how like, uh, yeah, it would, might not be that great. You'd never feel like you was like part of anything because you'd just be like watching like groups of people coming and you like, have been mates or whatever, and they'd all die, and you'd have to like start again. So it'd be kind of like being a bystander. That's where that line sort of came from. It. So yeah, that song's just all about what it might feel like if you just like live forever. Yeah, so that's good. That's what that's about. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, tune in tomorrow when I talk about song five, Gimtsu. That'll be good. Anyway, check out the album. It's available now. Stay right. Yo, dudes. Uh, Friday, brilliant, you know what that means? Time for some lager, excellent. Yeah, also means I'm here to tell you about track five on the new Dynamite and Dinosaurs album, The Greatest, out now, check it out. Yeah, so track five, well, track five is Gimsu. Yeah, brilliant, bit of a weird one, this. Uh, yeah, uh, I wrote this right at the end of the band. It's probably one of the, uh, last songs that was ever written for a band from the last like EP of four songs we did three were like really silly one was sort of serious it was sort of after the uh, Today Is Hate The World Day album which was for me a bit of a dark album sort of like well I don't know serious but it was a bit sort of more yeah reflective than my usual nonsense so yeah I sort of had enough of that and just wanted to sort of do some uh, you know get back to just writing the really silly songs yeah and uh, Gimps Who was one of those. It was just sort of an effort really to be sort of like a, a pop punk song and just sort of have kind of silly lyrics really. It's called, um, well you know what I just said, it's called Gimps Who, yeah. It's about basically uh, meeting a girl and then finding out that she kind of likes to just get off her face on acid and put on a gimp suit and uh, yeah, do kind of weird uh, kinky stuff. Uh, and yeah, I didn't really have a gimp suit in the song so I just, uh, yeah, dressed up like a gorilla. Yeah, it's just a bit, a bit stupid, really. It's a bit like a uh, sort of tongue-in-cheek song, with a bit kind of be like kind of Blink One Eight Two, one of my favourite bands, but not quite as uh, sort of crass and crude as them. Because I'm more sort of just stupid, really. I don't really like. Uh, never been one to just like fill the songs with like swearing and like really outrageous things, but I do like. Uh, Stupid things, that's just my weird sense of humour really. Yeah, a bit crazy. Anyway, yeah, it's Friday now, so I've uh, had enough of doing talking. Yeah, I'm gonna get some lager, have a Russell's burger, and yeah, get on with the weekend. Have a good one, dudes. Stay right now. Yo, dudes, right, so here I am on the beach in Sheringham, yeah. I'm here tonight uh, playing a bit of a gig at a uh, wedding reception near yeah, Dynamite and Dinosaurs rocking out the wedding bit unusual as a wedding band but we're only doing a little bit and then there's a more normal band on yeah but it's nice down the beach on a summer evening just nipped off for a little bit just had the toast and that had a couple of beers and uh, yeah getting warmed up ready for the uh, the gig yeah but here I am to tell you about uh, track six on the uh, new Dynamite and Dinosaurs album the greatest yeah track six is called Far Away and um, that's a song I wrote probably about 1999. Uh, I wrote it about like, you know, I was a bit young and full of, full of crap back then. So I was always like, yeah, I'm gonna be a rock star. It was like a song written about, you know, how, yeah, um, nothing's gonna hold me back. I'm gonna get there and be a rock star. But it's the only song on the album that I have kind of modified the lyrics to a bit to more kind of reflect the actual state of reality and how, you know, that was always a pipe dream, but you know, it's all good to like, dream big in it so it's kind of more of a song now about how yeah that never happened but never mind you gotta carry on it's called far away because i just like back then i just wanted to get away from norfolk i quite like it now it's all right really but uh yeah back then i just want to get far away go to hollywood or something which was a bit ridiculous it's never gonna happen to someone like me but gotta try it yeah anyway yeah that's track uh six off the new 
the new album, The Greatest, Dynamite and Dinosaurs. Get the album now or, or stream it, steal it, whatever. Send me a message. I'll get you a CD somehow. I've got no kind of... People keep asking me for CDs on the uh, on uh, Facebook and that, but uh, I've got no means to like take payment for it, so you just have to like, let me know where you live or whatever, and I'll bump into you and I'll, I'll get you a CD. Anyway, it's lovely down here at the beach. Look, check it all out. Look. That's what summer's all about, isn't it? Anyway, I'll better get back to the wedding, drink some more beer. Stay right. Yo, dudes. <laughs> How's it going? So it's Sunday now, yeah, brilliant. So like the weekend of uh, partying and going crazy is uh, finally coming to a close. And here I sit in my incredibly cool car, about to drive to mum's for dinner. Yeah, where I get like uh, a weekly load helping of loads of vegetables to, you know, try and get a bit of uh, good health into my system. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, here I am to tell you about track seven of the new Dynamite and Dinosaurs album, The Greatest, available now. Down. Yeah, track seven, that is a song called The Slug, yeah. It's the oldest, oldest song by far on the album. I wrote it way back in, uh, yeah, 1996. It's one of the very sort of first songs that I ever wrote in, in spot. So yeah, it's a real old one. As in like telling you what the song's about, well, yeah, I've got to give you a bit of a break. It was like nearly 30 years ago. I can't really remember what I was thinking when I wrote that. It seems to be some sort of, uh, cliched nonsense about how bad I am, you know, yeah, sort of rubbish that you write when you're very young. It's not the sort of thing I write now, but it's a, it's quite a cool little song. It was uh, one of Mike's choices. It's not one I'd particularly want to do, but I was quite pleased with how it came out, really. It's a uh, very similar to the original, just sort of changed a couple of bits, added like, a guitar solo, a bit, like a weird verse that used to be in it, where I just went scream, scream all, all the time. And it was, I don't know what I was thinking when I did that, so we changed that bit. Other than that, it's pretty much the same, but just sounds, just sounds a lot better now, so yeah. Yeah, so check that out, that's track seven, uh, The Slug, yeah. Uh, hope you all had a good weekend, and yeah, we're back to Monday again already. Weeks, weekends go too far. Anyway, stay rad, take care, bye-bye. Alright, dudes, so yeah, feels like summer's finally arrived, and it's getting, uh, yeah, pretty hot at the moment, yeah, but... Just trying to put up a little bit. Anyway, here I am to tell you about yeah, track eight. Yeah, only three left, so there's not many of these stupid videos left. Uh, so we're up to number eight now, which is Anarchy in the UK. Yeah, and I can't tell you about what I was thinking when I wrote this song, because I didn't, didn't actually write it as a cover, yeah. It was written by the Sex Pistols, but it has got a bit of a history with the band. I actually used to play it in a, one of our very early bands, right? We used to do like the Megadeth version of it. So yeah. I think it's just about like being kind of anarchistic or whatever. But yeah, it's quite a good song. It wasn't actually intended to be be on the album originally. We actually recorded it for like a, someone contacted us about doing like a, a Sex Pistols tribute album and asked if we do Anarchy in the UK. So yeah, we said, oh, we're going to go and we bashed it out. We did sort of a, kind of made it more of a pop punk version. So if you heard the original, I was a bit more like energetic to my full on. So yeah. Check that out, that's pretty good. So yeah, it's coming towards the end of my little videos of the albums. Uh, so only two more to go. You'll probably be glad to hear. We won't be running on anymore. Anyway, yeah, check out the new album, The Greatest by Dynamite Dynamite. Stay rad, enjoy the rest of your week. All right, dudes, how's it going? Yeah, so here I am, like just chilling out on my couch. It's been hot today, yeah, and I've been like working hard. Ugh, I can't even be bothered to stand up now. I'm just gonna just gonna chill here for the rest of the evening. Anyway, here I am to tell you about track nine. Yeah, nine. This is the uh, penultimate video in my little uh, series telling you about the new songs on the uh, on the the new album, The Greatest. Yeah, by Dynamite and Dinosaurs. Go check it out. Yeah, it's rad, brilliant. So yeah, track nine is the god of rock and roll. I wrote this back in about uh, year 2000, something like that, I can't remember. It's just all about, yeah, how I'm the god of rock and roll. Yeah, uh, you might not all agree with that. There's a bit of a sort of line in the song about that, but yeah, I don't care. I don't need a big following. I'm more of like a, uh, yeah, uh, cult leader, shall we say, yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm the god of rock and roll in my little weird cult, but it's not a, it's not a bad cult. We don't like go around like uh, killing people or like, you know, doing weird stuff. We're just into things like, uh, yeah, just being rad all the time. And uh, 
celebrating everything good that happens in the world with a beer and then uh, yeah try not to do anything bad so yeah it's a good cult to be in so join my little cult yeah dynamite and dinosaurs uh it's a, we've even got like a super superhero on the drums so yeah you know you're involved with something good yeah big mike actually i don't think he was a superhero he's a super villain but yeah we'll, we'll just we'll we'll brush you over that bit yeah so yeah that's track nine the god of rock and roll and uh yeah only one more of these little silly videos to go yeah track 10 tomorrow that'll be the end of it and you won't have to listen to me running on anymore until i uh do another stupid video probably when i'm drunk after the pub talking rubbish but yeah it's all good isn't it so yeah i hope you've enjoyed this series you probably haven't you probably haven't watched it but uh if you have watched it thank you very much and i hope you enjoyed the album but i'll see you for one more video tomorrow so yeah hope you had a good day stay rad see you next time all right dudes so you'll be pleased to hear this is the last one of the uh, stupid little videos i'm doing talking about the new songs off the uh, new dynamite and dinosaurs album the greatest available everywhere now yeah it's uh well it's been a bit of a thing actually talking about every song you'll probably be sick of sight of me keep popping up on your feed probably just ignoring it scrolling past whatever yeah but it's all over now because this is the uh the last one yeah so today i'm talking about track 10 on the new album which is a song called daylight yeah i wrote this back in like 2002 it was off a little uh demo that we did it was actually the last thing we recorded in the first iteration of of uh, Spot. It was uh, at the it was a recorded session that we also did the greatest on actually. Yeah, so there's two songs off that that recording on on this uh, on this album. Yeah. So uh, Daylight, what was that all about then? Well, basically, it was just some sort of emo punk song about like a it's a breakup song really. It's all about just like oh whoa, it's me, I'm so miserable, my birds dump me kind of crap. Yeah, it's so not that much interesting to talk about with that one. So I, what I thought I'd do instead is yeah, I just thought I'd show you some of the things we did as part of the years. Look, we at one point we even had like a remember these like a blue vinyl. That's pretty rad. That's a rare thing. Signed by all the bands. We did that back in 1997. It's like a band called Cato and Sodlaw on there, that's rad. And we also like, used to put our early stuff out on like tape. You know that look? Yeah, tape, all kind of bit of a thing from the past. But we did actually move on to some CDs. They started off with these weird hand-drawn things like that, yeah. All our early songs on there. We had a bit of a cow thing, yeah, that Lager the Life. Always had intelligent song titles. And then uh, we did a Serpent on Dead Sea, but that one's still sealed. Mental. I thought I'd just say a big thanks to all the people who played in the band with me over the years, because without them, it would have been possible for me to do all these stupid songs. And I really appreciate people taking the time, you know, when they've probably got better things to do, and playing a band with me, so it's been an honour to play with these guys and actually be able to get my music out there. And without their help, I wouldn't have been able to do anything. So yeah. I just like to go through all the people who were inspired over the years. Of course, we started, uh, yeah, in 1996 with Big Mike on drums, obviously. Yeah, he's pretty much been a mainstay. And uh, Andrew Phillips Phipps, yeah, he started with us on bass. And then, like a couple of couple of years in the band, we got Gavin Thomas. He came in at the whole another dimension with his rad guitar playing and attitude. That was cool. Yeah. Then uh, about a year after that, uh, sadly, Phipps decided to leave. And we got Chris Brown in on bass, and he brought in some great backing vocals, so that was awesome. Uh, and then we played as that lineup for a while. And then Mike Wrestling started to take off a bit, yeah, so he thought he didn't have time for it, so he left. And we got uh, Jamie Saunders in, he came in and played the drums for us a bit, he was great. Yeah, and then uh, a little while later he left, and Ollie Mills came in for a while and played drums with us. Uh, Errol Watson, who came in and helped us out when, uh, when uh, Chris hurt his arm or whatever. I think Haley, Haley Hannon come in and helped us with, for a bit as well. So yeah, that was all good. And then we broke up for a bit and uh, me and Ollie went and did camp a band called uh, uh, Rad Day 7, almost said something else there, yeah. And uh, then a little while later, Mike thought, oh, we'll give Spot another crack. And so we got back together. And then we got Chris Brown back in, but he played guitar this time. Ollie Mills played bass for us. And uh, yeah, Big Mike was back on the drums. And that was how it carried on till about whenever we broke up, which I think was about 2008, something like that. I can't really remember. 
But yeah, so big thanks to all the people who are in that band and also people who've played with me in other bands like Joey and Paul in Kamikaze Radio, uh, Jace, AD and uh, Hopper from the very first band Bad Influence, the people who are in Riot, everyone everywhere. Thanks ever so much for playing with me over the years, really appreciate it. And oh yeah, of course, uh, a lot of the boys from Spot, we also did a band called the uh, Pocket Godzillas. Yeah, we put out three pretty rad EPs in that band. You can check out all them on the uh, like, you know, all the stream and stuff as well. They're all still up there. Good albums, check them out. Pocket Godzilla, brilliant. And of course, a massive thanks to Mike again, and Adam Davis, and Tony Kerridge for playing in Dynamite Dinosaurs and making it such a rad, rad project to be, be involved with. We've got three albums out now, so yeah. Keep an eye out for them, they're everywhere and available. It's still all up there. The first album, Dynamite and Dinosaur Skill, all the classics on there, Food Manoeuvre, Chainsaw Mutilation, Ball Bag, Part Man, Part Llama. Of course, we've got the second album, New Age Medallion Man. Brilliant, lovely picture of my chest on the front there. Yeah, excellent. And of course, the new album, The Greatest. It really is the greatest, I'm well chuffed with it. So check it out, I hope you enjoy it, and thanks for watching these if you've watched any of them. If you haven't, I don't blame you. But anyway, stay rad, I hope to see you at a gig sometime soon. Rock on.